I'm going to show you how to make dill and bunny applique from Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5 by 7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser per hooping and there are four hoopings, a selection of threads, one with a matching bobbin for the black, masking tape, T-pins, my squizzers and my fabrics and batting cut to size and I've also got a layer of Solvi topper here because I'm using a faux fur. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below. If you would like to take part in our prize draw to win Creative Kiwi loyalty points to the value of this design, then just keep on watching as details will be given further on in the video. You're going to start off each hooping by hooping your two layers of wash away stabiliser. If you're using a magnetic hoop, place your two layers of stabiliser over the frame. Take your magnets, place the top and bottom one first, keeping your fingers out of the way because it will bite. And then put the sides on. And your hoop is now ready to use. If you're using a traditional frame, place your two layers of wash away stabiliser over the outer frame. Insert the inside piece. And then we're going to pin around the top edge of our hoop to stop our stabiliser from being pulled down during stitching. So take your pin, place it on the inside frame, push it through, bring it round and back through the stabiliser again. And that will anchor it. And you're going to do that on all four sides. The larger your hoop, the more pins you will use. Load file A into your machine, which is Dylan's right leg, his right, your left, along with your neutral thread colour. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one, and that's going to give you a place and outline for your batting. And I'm going with black so that you can see what I'm doing. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. And that's also going to give you placement lines for your fabrics. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitches. I'm not making my bunny reversible today, but if you want to make yours reversible, whatever fabric you put on the front of the hoop, you're also going to put on the back, with the exception of a backing fabric, of course, because that's covered by the fabrics that you add throughout. We're now going to place our fabric for this area here, which is his leg. Place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. And I'm going with grey. We're now going to trim away the excess fabric from here and here. Place your fabric for the belly here over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it. Place your fabric for the foot over the outline. 
and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five to secure it. Load your thread colour for the pads of his feet into your machine and then stitch round number six and I'm going with pink. Trim away all the fabric from the inside of the stitch lines, taking care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to add our backing fabric, so turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven to secure it. And I'm going with grey. Trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of the hoop, taking care not to cut your stitches. So turn your hoop over. making sure that you've got your thread colour for the satin stitching of the segment loaded into your machine. We're now going to stitch round number eight and that's going to zigzag the raw edges and I'm going with grey. making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitch detail loaded into your machine. We're now going to stitch round number nine and I'm going with grey. So now that that's finished stitching we can now free our segment from the hoop so turn your hoop over and taking care not to cut any stitches, cut around the edge. We're now going to trim away the, and neaten up the edge here and we're going to cut close to the stitch line without cutting it, ready for our join. And that's our first segment completed and we can set our work aside for the minute. We're now going to do the second hooping. So hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser. Load file B into your machine which is his other leg along with your neutral thread colour. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for your batting and also your join marker for later on. And I'm going with black so that you can see what I'm doing. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. And that's also going to give you your fabric placement lines as well. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitches. We 
we're now going to place our fabric for the leg over this area here so place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it we're now going to clear this um, area here of excess fabric and we can now place our fabric for the foot so place it over the outline and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it load your thread color for the pads of the feet into your machine and then stitch round number five and I'm going with pink Before we add our backing fabric we're going to clear all the inside stitch lines with fabric and now we can add our backing fabric so turn your hoop over place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six to secure it. And I'm going with grey. Trim away the excess from both back and front of your hoop. the excess fabric from both back and front of the hoop taking care not to cut your stitches so turn your hoop over making sure that you got your thread colour for the satin stitching loaded into your machine we're now going to stitch round number seven and that's going to zigzag around the edges here and it's going to stop where we come to do our join and I'm going with grey so we're now going to join our first segment to this one and this is where this little line here becomes very very important we're not so worried about this one here that's just to help uh, you align things but we want to place and I've done a little line in pen on here the last stitch of the satin stitching we want to place that on this line because if we don't once we do the satin stitching uh, over these areas you're going to have a gap there and that's not going to be very nice so place this stitch line this um, stitch here on top of that line there and align the rest on top of this line here and then you're going to tape it in place Just to hold this down I'm going to put a little piece of sellotape over there just to hold it and then I'll remove it after we've done the zigzag stitching. So we're now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number eight and that's going to zigzag up here and to join the two segments together. 
Okay, so we're just going to check our drawing, make sure that we're happy with it. I'm going to try and get this closer, see if you can see that last stitch is on that marker line there. If you're not happy with your drawing, unpick the zigzag stitching, reposition segment one, secure it in place, and then stitch round number eight again. If you are happy with it, we're now going to stitch round number nine, and that's going to do the satin stitching um, detail of the segment. I've just put a little bit of cellar tape across here just to hold this area nice and flat because the, the uh, satin stitching is going to come up here. So that's our stitching for this hooping completed. And as you can see, I've got no gap in the satin stitching there at all. Although I have got a little pen mark on my fabric, but I'll get rid of that later. We're now going to free our work from the hoop. So turn your hoop over and taking care not to cut your stitches, we're going to cut around the edge. Before we go any further we're just going to trim up the stitch line here ready for our join later on. So cut close to the stitch line without cutting any stitches. And that's our second segment completed and we can set our work aside for the minute. So this is the third hooping. Hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser as before. Load file C into your machine along with your neutral thread colour. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one. That's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to place our fabric for the head, so place it over the stitch line and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. Load your thread colour for the inside of the ears into your machine and then stitch round number four and I'm going with pink. Load your thread colour for the white of the eyes into your machine and then stitch round number five and I'm going with white. Load your thread colour for the colour of the eyes into your machine and then stitch round number six and I'm going with green. Load your thread colour for the black of the eyes and the eyebrows into your machine and then stitch round number seven 
And I'm going with black. Load your thread colour for the highlight of the eyes into your machine and then stitch round number 8 and I'm going with white. We're now going to add our backing fabric so turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Load your thread colour for the satin stitching into your machine and then stitch round number 9 and I'm going with grey. Trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of your hoop so turn your hoop over and trim around the edge taking care not to cut your stitches. Making sure that you've got your thread colour for the satin stitching loaded into your machine. You're now going to stitch around number 10 and that's going to zigzag around the edge of the head. We're now going to stitch round number 11 and that's going to do the satin stitching around the head and the ears. And I'm going with grey. Now the stitching for the segment's done, we're going to free our work from the hoop. So turn your hoop over and taking care not to cut your stitches, cut around the edge. Before we go any further we're going to trim up along the raw edge here ready to for our join in the next hooping. So cut close to the stitch line taking care not to cut any stitches. And that's our third segment completed and we can set our work aside for the minute. We're now going to do the fourth hooping. So hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser. Load file D into your machine along with your neutral thread colour. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure your batting and give you your placement outlines for your fabrics. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line taking care not to cut your stitches. Now we're going to place our fabric for the face over the placement outline. So place it down and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. Thank you. 
Before we add our fabric for the ruff we're going to trim along here to remove the excess that's covering um, the rough area. So now we're going to place our fabric for the rough over this area here and I'm using a faux fur so if you're using a faux fur or anything that's got a long pile you're going to want to place um, a layer of Solvi Topper which is a wash away stabiliser over the top and that will stop your foot from getting tangled in the pile and then we're going to stick it down pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it before we go any further we're going to clear the excess fabric from along this stitch line so turn your hoop and trim away taking care not to cut any stitches load your thread colour for the nose and tongue into your machine and then stitch round number five load your thread colour for the back of the mouth into your machine and then stitch round number six and I'm going with wine red load your thread colour for the teeth into your machine and then stitch round number seven and I'm going with white load your thread colour for the whiskers into your machine and then stitch round number eight and I'm staying with the white Load your thread colour for the bottom lip into your machine and then stitch round number nine and I'm going with grey. Load your thread colour for the satin stitching of the teeth into your machine and then stitch round number ten and I'm going with white. We're now going to add the backing fabric so turn your hoop over place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round it number 11 to secure it and I'm going with grey Trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of the hoop, taking care not to cut your stitches. So turn your hoop over. If you're worried about your thread colour showing through on the zigzag stitching, load your thread colour for the rough into your machine and then stitch round number 12 and that's going to zigzag up along here and down this side here and it's going to stop where we come to do our join. And I'm going with grey. We're now going to join our legs to the rough and you're going to place this stitch line here 
on top of this stitch line here between where the zigzagging starts and stops and secure it in place and if like me you're using pins make sure that you keep them right out of the way of the stitch line and I'm going to place some tape on the ends here just to hold that in place now I'm going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 13 and that's going to zigzag around here and join the two segments together so check your join make sure that you're happy with it if you're not unpick the zigzag stitching reposition your segments secure them in place and then stitch round number 13 again next we're going to do the zigzag stitching around his face so if you want to change your thread color out now is the time to do so and then we're going to stitch round number 14 and i'm staying with the gray so now we're going to do the join for the face and you're going to align this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here and secure it in place and if like me you're using pins make sure that you keep them right out of the way of the stitch line I'm just going to place a little bit of tape just to keep that edge flat pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 15 and that's going to zigzag along here and join the two segments together so check your join make sure that you're happy with it if you're not unpick the zigzag stitching reposition the head secure it in place and then stitch round number 15 again if you are happy with it we're now going to do the satin stitching of the rough so load your thread color for that into your machine and then stitch round number 16 and I'm going with grey load your thread color for the satin stitching around the face into your machine and then stitch round number 17 and I'm staying with the grey load your thread color for the satin stitching of the nose into your machine and then stitch round number 18 and I'm going with pink so that's the stitching done we can now free our work from the hoop so turn your hoop over and taking care not to cut your stitches or anything else underneath your hoop trim around the edge We're now going to dissolve the excess wash away stabilizer from around the joins and the edge of your bunny. So take a cotton bud, dip it in some warm water and just wipe it along the joins anywhere where there's any excess. Okay, so it's competition time. If you would like to win Creative Kiwi loyalty points to the value of this design, like subscribe and share to support this channel and give me one funny theory about how easter eggs became associated with bunnies this competition will close on sunday the 31st of march at 6 p.m central european time plus two and a winner will be picked at random from all the valid entries and announced in the video description under the winner's comment and on creative kiwi's facebook group so be sure to check back and see if it's you good luck and thanks for taking part Next we're going to remove the solvy topper from the rough and that's just going to pull off. And we're going to fluff up his rough a little bit by lifting the pile 
from underneath the satin stitching. I'll just put my scissors, hold them closed and I'll just push it in and wiggle up the pile. And I've just got a little brush. And that's our bunny completed. And that's our bunny completed. I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's always lots of ideas, help and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and some discount codes for you as well. Take care and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.